Hey guys, a very good morning and welcome to Power Breakfast. I'm Pavitra Parekh. Those are all of the top headlines that we're tracking this Thursday morning. So we'll get to all of those in just a minute. But first up, let's talk about the global market because finally, we did see a good session come through on Wall Street. All of the indices saw significant gains. And on the back of that, you have Asia opening well in the green. So most Asian markets are in the green right now. Although there has been a slight slip in the Hang Seng in the past couple of minutes. So that's around 40 points in the red. You also have the Chinese uh, market, the Shanghai index, which is in the red a little bit but what is doing well is the Japanese market it's up two percent right now so that one's seeing the strongest gains Taiwan is up on your screen around four tenths of a percent higher there as well cost piecing gains of around two tenths of a percent so it's looking quite mixed but largely it's quite all right as far as Asia goes and Japan definitely uh, stealing the line right here with a two percent up move let's also bring the SGX nifty up for you because that is indicating a good start for the Indian market we currently have it uh, 106 points in the green so it looks like we might get a good start and then we'll see how we take the day from there. Remember, we did end with cuts of around 30 points yesterday. So that's what's really going down in Asia. But let's talk about the U.S. markets as well. Wall Street's indices rebounded in a broad-based rally with the Dow Jones surging over 400 points. The S&P 500 was up 1.8% at the close. And the Nasdaq Composite was the main gainer. So it saw uh, gains of around 2% uh, percent when we ended the trading session. CNBC Sarah Eisen is here with all of that action. After three weeks of mostly down days here on Wall Street, stocks posted solid gains as lower oil prices helped alleviate some inflation fears. The Dow closing up almost one and a half percent. S&P 500 finishing with a gain of almost two percent and the Nasdaq breaking a seven session losing streak with the biggest gain among the three major indexes up more than two percent. Apple introducing new products today at its first in-person event since the pandemic began including four versions of the new iPhone 14 and a new Apple Watch. The top of the line iPhone 14 Max will start at $1,100, which is the same as last year. That's the action from the U.S. market. Back to you in Mumbai. Sarah, thanks a lot for getting us all of that action from the U.S. markets. But staying with Wall Street then, the Fed's beige book, that is its commentary on current economic conditions, showed that there was no change in economic activity and the growth outlook still remains quite weak. CNBC's Steve Leesman filed this report. The beige book, the collection of economic analysts from the 12 Federal Reserve Bank, just says economic activity was unchanged over the course of the uh, the period, the six-week period. Uh, usually they say it's modest to moderate growth. First unchanged we've seen in a while. Now, five districts say there was slight to modest growth. Five districts said there was slight to modest softening in growth in their districts. Most districts did say the consumer spending was steady, though auto sales were muted. There was solid leisure and hospitality activity across the districts, though. Uh, manufacturing did grow in several districts, but some manufacturing declined, and that was due to supply chain issues and labor shortage. Residential real estate weakened noticeably, according to the base book. Growth outlook, the growth outlook, however, remained generally weak overall for the U.S. economy. When it comes to employment, it rose at a modest to moderate pace. Labor market conditions remain tight, but one bit of good news here, there was some improvement in labor supply. The reports of slowing wage growth uh, in some places, but prices remained elevated. Nine districts, though, reported some moderation in the rate of price increases or inflation. There was substantial price infl inflation, though, reported across all districts, including for food and rent and other uh, necessities. Some tapering was seen in commodity prices and pricing pressures, however, according to the context of the Federal Reserve, were expected to persist through the year end. One little bit here, let me add Michael Barr, the vice chair of banking supervision, the new vice chair, laying out his views on uh, uh, banking regulations, saying crypto asset, crypto related assets uh, activity requires oversight. And then this from the Federal Reserve and Bank Supervisor. He plans to work with other, other regulators to ensure that crypto activity inside banks is well regulated. He said he's committed to a safer and fairer banking system. All right, Steve, thanks a lot for getting us all of the highlights from the Fed's beige book. But with that, let's also bring you some important commentary. This comes in from Fed officials. In fact, Federal Reserve Vice Chair Lael Brainard vote, uh, vowed to press the fight against inflation and said that it is hurting lower income Americans the most. So uh, speaking at an event in New York, she added that taming inflation will mean more interest rate hikes going forward and keeping the interest rates higher for longer without committing to a specific course of action. Brainard said that the Fed needs to remain quite vigilant. 
Now, uh, remember this comes even as, of course, the Fed's beige book shows that there is really no uh, improvement as far as the outlook goes. But that's what's happening as far as the Fed commentary goes. Remember, Jerome Powell is also due to speak at a conference later today, so we'd watch out for what he has to say on that front as well. But let's also bring you the final update from our global market wrap. We got some mixed cues coming through from the European markets ahead of the ECB meet later today. So the French CAC closed quite flagged. The German DAX index was up around 44 points. And uh, the FTSE, which will also come up on your screen, saw cuts of around 62 points. In fact, the British pound also slipped to its lowest level against the US dollar that we've seen since 19. And do remember, we pointed to this earlier as well, that Deutsche Bank had warned on Monday that the risk of a sterling crisis should not be underestimated. So that is something you should keep your eye out on, the dollar pound rate on your screen. But speaking of Europe, uh, investors will watch out for the European Central Bank's decision later today. The ECB is expected to front load a series of rate hikes with analysts expecting a 75 basis points hike today, uh, today as it attempts to tame rising inflation. And just to alert you, inflation in the eurozone did hit 9.7%. This is for the month of August. August. So the CCB decision, of course, crucial to watch in that context. But that's what's happening as far as the European markets go. Just sticking with this and the ECB, let's also bring you some important opinion. This comes in from Jim O'Neill. So let's listen in to what he had to say. Certainly right now, uh, the only debate in Europe is who's going to be uh, in the bigger recession first uh, here in the UK or on the continent, etc., etc. And of course, uh, we have the ECB tomorrow going to uh, probably raise rates 75 basis points. Bank of England facing a remarkably superficially at least expansive fiscal policy from the incoming trust government. Probably going to accelerate rate hikes more. And that's right. before we even get to China, which is looking pretty grim as well, of course. All right, so that is some important global market action as well as opinion that we're tracking for you this morning. But let's now 